Malvi, uh, congratulations on this new record, Beautiful Medalies and Hypnotic Instrumentals. I love it. Thank you. Um, Malvi, I want to start with the name of this new record, Always Center at Night. Does it have any special meaning or something for you? Yeah, when I first started DJing in the mid 80s, I had a bunch of friends in New York who were degenerates and punk rockers and graffiti artists. And we would hang out and listen to music and stay up all night. And I remember one night, my friend Althea, who was a punk graffiti artist, mm -hmm. was spinning around at five o'clock in the morning and saying that she was only centered at night. And I just remember that stuck with me because at that time in my life, like I didn't want to be around during the day, like the daytime felt very uninspiring to me, whereas night was sort of magical and mysterious. Okay, as a good DJ. <laughs> yeah. In, in your pursuit of innovative sounds, you have established yourself as a collector of voices, showcasing a range of vocal talents in your work because it's not the usual name. So I don't know the collaborations because there are not huge names here in, in this record that maybe we could expect from an artist of the level like you, you know? So instead, there's a mix of diverse voices and genres because you're a connoisseur of voices, of the texture of vocal cords, uh, whatever sampling artists and working with superstars. So what are the criteria and maybe what do you look for in, in an artist and in their voice to collaborate with? When I'm looking for a, a voice, really what I'm looking for is that combination of beauty mm -hmm. and talent, but also something unique, you know, because as we know, there are a lot of singers with great voices where their voices aren't very unique. Yeah. And what I want is that that special quality that a voice has to communicate something about the person's experience, their experience of the human condition, you know, the the strength and the vulnerability. And that's that's what I'm looking for, because I hear a lot of normal voices that don't really do anything for me. But then I hear someone like Lady Blackbird or Serpent with Feet or any of the other singers on the record. And I just fell in love with that unique quality of their vocals. And Movi, the album tracks delve into personal themes, reflecting the, police, the political essence of your work, of course, and being influenced by electronic music from the last three decades, uh, offering a diverse sonic landscape, maybe, for example, from the hip, the trip hop vibe of We're Going Wrong, the Latin house rhythms of Feeling Come and Down, and even the drum and bass influence Medusa. So tell me about this mix of genres and what you try to accomplish on this record. Well, in the mid 80s, I started spending a lot of time in New York City, going to nightclubs, going to bars, going to record stores, going to venues. And there was something magical about the world of dance music then mm -hmm. because it didn't have definition. Yeah. You know, there was you would go out and you would hear hip hop, but you'd also hear disco and you'd hear reggae mm -hmm. and you'd hear all these different types of music combined and i found that to be really liberating and so with this record with always entered the night i wanted to channel that experience you know to, to basically have what is essentially an electronic record a dance record but to give it the feeling that i had when i walked into a bar in 1985 and the dj was playing ESG and Manu Dibongo and Grace Jones and all these different types of music at the same time. Wow, amazing. And I want to go to another topic because this year marks the 25th anniversary of Play, a record that was originally intended to be your final record back in that time and became an unexpected global hit. So how do you see it in retrospect in an era of an independent artist uh, after being maybe dropped and rejected by major labors 25 years ago? I mean, the, the nature of, as you know, the music world has changed mm -hmm. completely in some ways for better, in some ways for worse. But back then in 1999, I really thought, as you mentioned, that play was going to be my last record. Mm -hmm. You know, and I thought I was going to go back to school and get a Ph.D. and teach philosophy somewhere mm -hmm. or maybe become an architect. And every single thing that happened with play, all the, the strange success was completely unexpected. 
if we talk about the album, of course, I got to ask you about the songs, especially uh, about Porcelain and Natural Blues that were such great hits back in the day. So what's the story and inspiration behind these couple of songs? Well, the interesting thing, when I was making play, I never expected anyone to hear it. <laughs> so honestly, I was just working on music that I loved. Mm -hmm. And there, I mean, there's a lot of history, as you know, of musicians making music that they don't expect anyone to hear and that ends up being their most interesting music you know there's something about commercial expectations that can actually really compromise the creative process for a lot of musicians so with porcelain and natural blues i was just trying to create music that connected with me emotionally and again my assumption was no one else was ever going to listen to it so i first and foremost i had to make something that i loved And Movi, you're getting back on the road for the first time in more than a decade, heading to the UK and Europe this upcoming September for a short tour, performing all of your hits and, of course, celebrating the 25th anniversary of this record of play with all the profits going to animal rights organizations. That's amazing. Can you please tell me a little more about it? Yeah, well, I, I don't like touring. I love mm -hmm. making music and I love playing music live, but I don't really like going on tour. Yeah. So the only way my manager could get me to go on tour was to to agree to give all of the profits to animal rights organizations, wow. um, because that's my life's work, you know, being a vegan, being an animal rights activist and giving the money to animal rights organizations was that was the one thing that could actually get me to consider going back on tour. Incredible. And Mavi. You have been considered among the most important dance music figures in the early 90s, you know, and helping bring the dance music to a mainstream audience in the States and even the United Kingdom. So what do you think about maybe the recent trends with the comeback of techno, the one that we listen back at the end of the 90s, and the nostalgia of disco in pop music in these days, maybe with artists like Dua Lipa and The Weeknd on all these records that has this influence, this sound from that beautiful music from the 70s. What's really interesting is how every part of music has changed. Well, almost every part, you know, like in order to make a dance record in the 70s, I guess you had to have a band, you had to have tape machines, you had to have a huge recording studio. And then to make dance music in the early 90s, you had to have a bunch of synthesizers and samplers. And now people do everything on a laptop. And there's something very democratic and wonderful about that mm. but the one thing that hasn't changed is how people respond to their favorite piece of music you know mm -hmm. it almost in a way doesn't matter how the music's made what matters is how people respond to it and it is especially sort of funny you know because disco in the 70s it was killed off you know mm -hmm. especially in the united states like by 1980 disco had been left for dead And it's really funny that it just keeps coming back because obviously there's something really special about beautiful celebratory music that people can dance to. And Movi, you're a person that explores with sounds, you know, that everything you like that may makes you feel good, as you have recently told me, to try to look for something unique in the voices. So I want to ask you about the current trend uh, nowadays, especially in Latin music, the music from here, from our country, from this region in the world, regarding the rise and the uh, um, thing that is happening right now with reggaeton and Latin music that you have included as well in this new record. So what do you think about maybe these things changing in the industry that maybe uh, were taking and we're putting our eyes more on Latin music in this kind of Caribbean uh, genres with that Latin flavor. What do you think about these sounds and of course the mix of them in electronic music? I think it's wonderful that basically cultures who traditionally had not been very well represented, especially in the United States, uh, are now being better represented. Mm -hmm. And especially like Latin culture is... 30% of the United States. Like, it's it's bizarre to me that, you know, like, when you watch award shows or when you watch TV, like, there aren't that, there aren't that many Latin people mm. on television or in movies, which is so strange considering, like, Latin people in the United States are 30% of the population. Mm. So, to me, it just, it's a, it makes sense and it's wonderful that finally 
Latin culture is starting to get the attention that it deserves. And Movi, will you be open to do sort of collaboration with maybe a reggaeton artist? I don't know, maybe the ones here from Colombia that I know, of course, that you have heard like J Balvin, Carol G, Maluma. I don't know. Are you open to maybe to try these things, these sounds on your music? Yeah, I mean, there's so many interesting things going on in the world of reggaeton. And, you know, I I really loved, and this is going back a ways, but like when dancehall reggae mm. in the mid 80s was first happening in the late 80s, I really loved that. And I see reggaeton as being sort of, you know, a, it's it's sort of a combination of that and a lot of other musical influences. But I especially love the voices. Mm. So, I mean, there's some, you know, amazing singers and amazing MCs. So, yeah. Hopefully, at some point in my life, I'll be able to collaborate with them. Oh, that will be awesome, Moby. Saying thank you for taking this couple of minutes to talk with us here in W Radio Station in Colombia. I want you to make the invitation to all of our listeners and all the Moby fans down here in Colombia to go and listen to Always Center at Night, please. Okay. Uh, I wish I could say it in Spanish, but my Spanish <laughs> is, is kind of rusty. Um, but hi, I'm Moby, and this is my new album, Always Centered at Night. Let me try it in Spanish. Uh, Hola, soy Moby. E esto es mi nuevo disco, Always Centered at Night. Wow, great Spanish. Where do you learn it? That's amazing. It was oh, perfect. My, I Actually, my, half of my family is from Argentina and Ecuador. Wow, incredible. Yeah. Well, Moby, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be waiting for you down here in, in Colombia. I know that you don't like touring, but we hope we can finally have you here uh, in the future. I don't know, for one play to to got to listen to all of these hits that have always been with us during all these years and these 30th uh, years of career. Thank you. Yeah, I would love to, uh, but as you know, South America is a very large place. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing this tour in Europe because yeah. it's very small and you can very easily get from one place to the next. And it's like, I love Colombia, but oh. it's so far away from everything else, <laughs> even in South America. I know, I know. We hope we can arrange something in the future. So thank you and congratulations again for this beautiful record. Oh, thanks. It was wonderful speaking with you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.